Okay, let's scooch down here. Ah, we have people. Hi, Carol. All right, I see five viewers listed so far. Everybody's out there enjoying that sunshine. Yeah, it's kind of nice to see the sun this time of the year. Let's see. We don't have anybody on YouTube right now. Sandy's here. Hi, Sandy. And we are up to 11 viewers. So we'll just let a few more people join in. Um, so it's Friday. Everybody's getting ready for the weekend, getting their plans together. Hi, Rose. Oh, no sound. Sandy says she has no sound. Does everybody else, can you hear me? Um, because I would have to call Tyler. Let's see. I'm not seeing anybody else with sound problems so far, Sandy. So, uh, Judy can hear me. So, check your, uh, your computer. Yeah, I know, they do weird things. They, they conspire against us. Okay, yeah, looks like you, it's just you, Sandy, so push a few buttons and see what's happening. Hi, Debbie, on YouTube, that's nice, nice to see people, awesome, awesome. Okay, so it's Friday, we're getting ready for the weekend, uh, I hope you've got some fun things lined up for this weekend. I am going to, I'm going to try dyeing fabric with avocado pits. How about that? That's a plan. Um, <laughs> Don and I were talking about it because we both read the same article in a magazine and I had my little stash of avocado pits and she had hers. So we've combined them and we'll see what happens and maybe we'll fill you in next week on Tuesday to let you know how successful we are. What I wanted to do for you today, though, is I've had some people asking about this. Sometimes we do smaller panels. Sometimes we do art pieces. Maybe, maybe you're working on our Celebrate Winter Viewers Challenge, which is 24 by 24. And uh, so what I've got here and behind me is just one of our big big dahlia panels that I did up a little while ago and you've maybe noticed it does not have a binding on it. Uh, what, Wendy wants to know what color will it be? That's a surprise Wendy. You're gonna to have to tune in next week. It will let you know what color it will be. It's very pretty. We'll just say that. So sometimes when you've got those smaller panels you don't want to put a binding fabric on. Um, or maybe you can't find a binding that's exactly the right color, you want to finish it off. So what I'm going to show you briefly today is how to put a facing on your quilt. Here's a really good example on this big dahlia panel. And it gives a very different look to the front of the quilt. Now, of course, you can top stitch that so it kind of looks like a binding, but with some of these panels, it's like the artwork flows out to the edge. So, how do we begin? It's really quite simple. If you know how to do a binding, um, putting on a facing is not going to be a problem for you at all. Let's pop that back up there. There you go, Mr. Unicorn. So I've got a panel. This is what happens when you decide to clean up. You find these things, you go, oh, I should finish that. I should finish that thing. So I've just got a little panel that we did, oh, a year or so ago. Uh, worked very well because we sold all of the images. And this is just the little Tree of Life panel. So I started that, started the process by trimming that off to where I wanted it to end. It's not like a binding where you're going to be covering up a little bit. Um, it's trimmed right to the edge there so no little white spaces left and then I've cut some strips of fabric and they don't have to match uh, I cut them two and a half inches because that's what I'm used to cutting for binding it also makes a nice flat facing you can cut a little wider you can cut a little narrower 
if you're running a bit short on fabric. So I just cut my strips and then what I did was I folded in a looks like about a 3 8 inch, a quarter inch to a half inch on one side and I have pressed that. So now I am going to take that strip <laughs> and I'm going to put it right sides together across. I think I will do the top edge first because it's a nice small edge. So I'm going to put that right sides together with the unpressed edge lined up. We don't have an overhead camera right now because Tyler's phone is misbehaving. So I'm going to put you over here. Whoa. I know, he's got longer arms than I have. So if I put you over here and move this in so you can see, here's the edge of my panel, the front edge. Here is my facing strip. And I'm going to leave some extra at the beginning. Because of the length of my strips, I'm just going to do a blunt flat edge on one side and I'm hopefully we'll have time to show you how to miter it on the other edge. So line them up like this and I have my sewing machine set for a slightly longer stitch length. I think I'm at about three millimeters. I've just got a standard foot on but you could in fact ideally should use a walking foot. Well, hopefully this will work. There we go. I just got my little Bernina out today. It's easier to carry. So now we're just going to sew that on, and I'm using the width, width of the foot, so that I know is going to be about a 3 8 inch seam. Really, really easy to do. We'll get on to the hard part in a little bit. There is a hard part to this. So as we're doing this, maybe I can tell you some of the announcements. You can have a look at our newsletter that comes out today. So we have finally managed to get the hand embroidery class scheduled. Uh, I don't remember the dates off the top of my head, but Leah was hoping to get that in today's newsletter. So anybody who's been wanting to learn the fine art of hand embroidery, um, have a look on the newsletter for that. That will be ready and priced out for you. There we go. So I'm going to sew right to the end, not like doing a binding where you want to stop that quarter inch in. I, I'm sewing right to the end on that. Lift my foot. Where's my snips? Cut the thread. Okay. So now, which way shall I go first? Yeah, I think I'm going to do this part first. So now this is the trick with facings. I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to pull that facing out flat. So now you can see I'm on the back side and I'm pulling that snug like this. You could take the time, if you wish, to press that. Generally, you don't have to if you've got a good hand, good feel for it. And we are going to understitch. It's called. We're going to understitch the facing. So we are going to sew the seam allowance here. So that's inside of where our, our stitching line is. Oh, if I turn that, you can see. Stitching line is here, and we're going to stitch about halfway. We're going to sew our seam allowance down to our facing fabric. Go. The other nice thing with this process is you don't have to worry quite so much about what color thread you're using. Just something fairly neutral. It's going to blend in. And I'm just pulling that out nice and snug as I go. I 
I started with the short edge, of course, because, hey, that's easier. Go. Got our, our mechanical machine this time, so we got to do our own thread snipping. But that's all right. Sometimes that's good exercise. So now you can see on this side, it's sewn to the top, and there's my under stitching right there. So let's do one of the long sides before we work on turning that in. So I'm going to grab another strip. like this and I'm just going to start with that little bit extra lined up there Oh, wrong side silly Woohoo! goodness me it's a good thing they're different colors there we are so I'm going to line that up overlap it a little bit because I'm going to want to fold one of these under <coughs> lower my foot Oh, thread. I like. I always like to make sure that thread is tucked well under the foot. Sometimes a lot of the problems we have when we're starting off and we get the thread bunched is because it's not been tucked under and held down. There we go. So same process down the one side. It always feels good to get some of those um, little projects that we've got mostly finished, but they're just waiting for a binding, or they're waiting for a little bit of hand stitching, or they're waiting for some embellishing. And it always feels good when you can take a day and just gather those things all up and get them taken care of. It's like starting fresh. Then your brain can actually kind of work on starting a new project. Let's show. There we are. So that's that. I've got my machine set to default to needle down when I stop sewing. I hate it when I stop halfway along and the quilt pulls and tugs and all of a sudden my needle is not where it's supposed to be. So now for this bottom corner, instead of doing my under stitching first, I am going to, I'm just going to back that off, We snip there. I'm going to put that other piece on the bottom. And you can see how much this is extending past. It's extending past at least the width of the strip. So I'm going to try and show you how to miter that corner. So I want to have a little extra on that edge. And I've Back that off by my 3 8 So I'm going to sew the bottom strip on here before I do the understitching. So you can do it either way. A little bit of a caught thread here. There we go. Yep. 
Yeah, it's supposed to be a beautiful weekend. We might have to default to playing outside instead of sitting home quilting. Or maybe we can manage to do a little bit of both. Right. Okay, so now we've got that corner. And this is the part that, that hurts my head. I have to figure this out. If I was mitering that on the front side and then wanting to fold that in, it would be way too big. So what I want to be able to do, and I'm going to open out my fold. This is rather like when we, let's try this. I don't think I've ever done it this way. I'm, I'm actually quite lazy when it comes to some of these things, but um, it never hurts to give it a test. And sometimes what I would do to test drive it is actually get my pins out, uh, which I didn't bring. So, if that's like that, and that's like that, you know what? I'll figure it out and show it to you next week because I think it is ultimately going to be a little bit tricky to get it done. Mm. Yeah. So we'll start with the easy part, which is at the top here. So I have understitched that top edge. Now you can understitch from the top surface like this so that you can see the edge of your panel, or you can understitch from your seam allowance like that. I think in either case, you're going to want to leave a little bit of play in the corner. I kind of like understitching from this side. So I am going to swing that round. Start back here. There we are. Okay, as long as I keep the tension on. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I probably hit a button I shouldn't have with this thing, but I'm going to keep talking and hopefully everybody's still there because my screen has changed. It's what happens when you move the mouse. I'm going to move the mouse over here. <laughs> this is all going to be videoed anyways so I have no idea where my uh, where my folks went but that's okay down to there pop that up looks like our time is such that get clip that clip that okay so we're going to start with the simple one now the key to a nice facing you've got them under stitched very important now you're going to fold that to the back side just like that 
So making a nice, clean, clean edge. You're going to choose whichever one you want to do first. I think I'll do this one. And now you can cut off the excess on that facing small enough that it will tuck into the facing on the side. Now I can fold the side one in like that. Now I've got this little end. So that gets tucked down. See that there? Tuck that down. And this is where a good iron is going to help or a pin. This. Oh, I've got some pins just over there. I think I'll grab one. Okay. There we go. So we'll get our pins and we're going to turn that over and pin it. And we're turning in this edge here. Turn it in very slight angle. And then that gets turned in like that. Now we're purposely using a facing fabric that is a contrast so that it's a little easier to see for you. But you may want to have a facing that should it poke out a bit is not going to be seen. So I'm just going to put a couple more pins across here like this. There and down the side like there. Let's see if I can find this little guy. Let's go. There's my people. Okay. Awesome. We got that figured out. Okay. So I've just pinned that one corner for you so that you can see it. And now what you would do is get out your trusty needle and thread. You've got your little seam allowance turned under. Tuck this guy in. Tuck this guy in. Wrangle it in there. Fold it in nice and neatly. What have I got here? Right there. Like that. And then you are going to most likely hand stitch that in place just as you would a binding. Right out against the body of your quilt. Just like that. You can put a few pins along here and then spend a few minutes in front of the TV as the sun goes down. And so now you can see from the pins that's going to make a nice neat edge on there. Oh, I'm holding that the wrong way. All right, let's put it this way so that you can see it. How about that? There we are. So I've just pinned that one corner and I have just flat folded this one. So based on my timing, I think we're going to leave the mitered corner for next week. And hopefully I'll show you how that one works. This is actually still quite neat doing it that way. And from the front, you have a nice clean edge. We're going to switch you back. Hello, Mr. Cannon. So if I hold that up, just that corner like that, now you can see how you've got that nice clean edge with no additional fabric showing. And the trick is the understitching. Give that a little press, hand stitch it down, and you are set on that one. So that was it for, for today. I think it's a really nice way of finishing off um, the smaller panels, finishing off something that uh, you can't find the right color binding for. It just gives it a little bit of a different look. Teresa wants to know why would you do a facing instead of a binding? A lot of it is visual, Teresa. A lot of times it's um, 
you just want the look of the pattern or the uh, the quilting flowing off to the edge. Um, it's kind of the same difference as putting having a painting that you mount in a very narrow frame, an IKEA or a floating frame, or uh, as opposed to a larger wooden frame, say, or a painted frame. It's just a slightly different look. Okay, the process is very, very similar, uh, but I'm in the magazines, you'll see a lot of quilters just using that um, facing idea. One, one thing, say, let's say you have a, a quilted panel, well, we'll say 24 by 24, and the top half is quite bright, it's quite light colored, maybe it's white or pale blue for sky, and the bottom third is dark. Let's say you've done a landscape, and that is greens and browns and so on. So what color binding are you going to put on that that's not going to interrupt the visual look of that picture that you have made? That's gonna be pretty hard unless you piece your binding. Whereas if you do a facing, you're not interrupting the flow of the white and the dark along your, your uh, panel. So that's one reason. Some people just like them better that way, but uh, it's an option for you. It's an option. A binding definitely puts a colored frame around your work. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. So that's what I have for you today. Enjoy the weekend. Um, <laughs> Maureen's saying she has a quilt that she didn't want to have a binding frame on so yeah it's it's sometimes it's it's all visual and it's wonderful to have the options so have a great weekend everybody we'll be back with you next week and we'll see what other fun stuff we can come up with um, until then stay safe have fun quilting and enjoy the lovely weather wherever you happen to be okay i know we get people from across the country tuning in especially on our youtube um and uh, so the weather can be quite different i understand that the eastern canada is getting what we had here a week or so ago so our sympathies for you take care everyone thanks for joining